So we were discussing about uh, in the class before yesterday, we were discussing about uh, uh, MOSFETs and their operating regions, right? So we now from now on, we would like to move into uh, complete circuit treatment of MOSFETs and not get deep into how the underlying uh, structure, how, how the underlying holes and uh, and the mobility of of the holes affect the IV characteristics. Now we as we know that uh, that the uh, the assumptions that we'll make is we know that the IV characteristics is a is the following. So if we have a MOSFET, I'm not sketching the body. It's assumed that the body is reverse biased. This is source. This is gate. This is drain. This is the P MOSFET. So uh, a quick recap of the IV cat. So what is IG? IG is zero always, right? What is ISD? ISD basically has three regions of operation. One is the most obvious one. It's zero as long as PSG is lesser than some threshold voltage whatever the threshold voltage might be, uh, it's it's equal to mu P C ox W over L VSG minus threshold voltage times VSD minus half VSD squared. What is the condition for this? Right, so essentially in this case, it should be VSD should less than VSG minus Special voltage, right? Uh, what else? The third condition was the current is half mu p c ox w by l psg minus special voltage whole squared, right? So this is under the condition that. So when when does it reach this condition? When does it? When do we reach this? So I'm increasing VSD, and when it when I hit VSD is equal to VSD minus threshold voltage, right? Uh, so then we hit this saturation condition operation. When when we say saturation condition operation, we essentially say that as if we keep on increasing VSD, there will no no longer be any change in in current, right? So this region we call it as the linear region. This is cut off, and this is saturation. Okay, so this is under the condition that VSD is greater than or equal to VSG minus threshold voltage. Okay, so uh, so now the whole purpose of going through the three or four lectures, which we kind of motivated with regards to how the device works, was to get to these three equations. And to get to give you an intuitive understanding of why these equations make sense, okay. So uh, we uh, and a quick recall was we started off with the we started off with the analogy that instead of uh, charged particles, we had a reservoir of water, and the water was flowing from top to bottom, and there was some piston which was controlling the water flow, right? So that was the whole uh, that that was the way we started off looking into amplifiers and then we saw we, we argued that if that can be done using an electronic media electronic interface then it can be an electronic amplifier and the analogy should be quite obvious right now the gate to source voltage or source to gate voltage controls the flow of flow of charges from source to brain right so that's all that's all this is doing and if we can make an amplifier using the same uh what happened here 